So hi everybody, I'm Adrien Lagrange from France and I'm here to present you my work about uh, optimization of wireless networks. I did uh, under the supervision of Professor Levolato. Uh, so first of all, I just want to remind you um, about the current situation um, in the area of modern wireless networks. Um, actually, due to um, technological innovation, um, wireless networks technology evolved a, a lot recently, and now traditional control um, protocols are not uh, able to manage the complexity and the heterogeneity of the, um, of the networks. That's why we're looking for new solutions through machine learning and graph signal processing. So, the new modeling we choose is um, to model the um, protocols by weighted directed graph, where uh, each vertex uh, represents a state of the network. Uh, for example, um, for a state you have um, the, the first terminal will have a buffer queue um, with one packet, the second terminal with two packets, and so on. Um, so uh, obviously the variable describing the networks depends on the protocol control you're looking at. Um, then each edge represents a set of control action. For example, the arrival of a new packet or um, of the success of a transmission. And finally, the weight on the edges um, or the probability that this set of action occurs. So our problem is to use this new model to and um, graph signal processing to estimate a fundamental control function uh, we call the value function from a limited number of observations. So what is this value function? It's a function to estimate um, the cost of a long-term strategy uh, from a given node of our graph. Uh, it, use, it can use several uh, estimators, like uh, the throughput or the packet delay or whatever. But what is important is it, that it, this function is a signal on our graph, meaning it's a function defined on the node of our graph. So what we want to do is uh, assuming that we already know the value of our function on a small set of nodes and that we know also the, the protocol structure via the Laplacian of uh, the symmetrized transition matrix. We want to reconstruct our value function um, in using um, this uh, formula in interpolation. <coughs> but uh, what, what I said is the basic method. But our novel approach is to replace the symmetrized transition matrix by a new um, matrix um, that we build from um, a, a graph we call the similarity graph. This graph has the same nodes as the, um, the, the graph I presented you before, but the links are different. The links are created to to associate a similar substructure in our graph. Uh, in practice, we define a distance, which is the number of ops to which I cost test state. And uh, then we, um, we link nodes with the same distance or close distance. And finally, we set weight on the edges with this formula, where a W is an estimator of our value function. So um, now I use a case study to discuss the performance or um, approach. I use a random back of protocol, um, which is composed. Um, um, okay, we have a number um, of identical terminals, and each terminal has a back of counter and. A buffer queue, 
and at each time slot the back off is reduced by one and if the, ba the back off counter reaches zero um, we attempt a transmission. If the transmission is successful we attempt a new transmission and if the transmission fails um, the back of counter is reset to random value. And at each time slot, we have a certain probability that uh, a new packet arrived in the buffer. And finally, I use the throughput as a cost function. So, uh, what I presented you before about the construction of the similarity graph, it's a basic way to construct the, the similarity graph. But during my work, I um, did some improvements. Uh, for example, I told you that uh, I use uh, an estimator of the value function, um, which I call W in, uh, in the previous uh, slides. And um, I replace uh, this estimator but by a new one based on a random walk heuristic. And um, I also, also slightly change the way the the weight formula, um, I add a coefficient uh, who permit to have a better discrimination between these. And finally, I delete some link in the similarity graph to have some kind of localization in terms of distance on graph around high cost state. So uh, here are the results I get. So you can see here the um, signal noise ratio um, in function of the number of known samples. Um, so in green it's um, the method when I, I use the similarity graph, and in red it's uh, when we use um, the symmetrized transition matrix. So you can see that uh, the convergence is way faster with our similarity graph. Well, you, you can see that there is like uh, 20 dB of difference. So what I'm trying to do now is to um, use this method with a similarity graph with an, another kind of reconstruction based on a graph filtering. So um, I'm still working on it, on it but um, I already get some results who show that um, the, um, the method based on the similarity graph is uh, better than the basic method. So thank you for your attention and for any question. Questions? How many states uh, in general do you have for uh, this kind of problems? Um, Okay, in real world, I don't know, but uh, on my um, tasting um, set, I have like a 200 state, because after it's too long to, too long to compute. Okay. But so uh, I didn't get the idea of similarity. The distance uh, from the go to the goal states is the, so if the distance of two no, states differ by one, to the goal, then you cluster them as one state? Is that uh, no, it, we didn't cluster uh -huh. them as one state. We just link them with a um, yeah, link uh, with a weight uh, I described. Um, and the weight is uh, bigger if uh, the state are uh, similar. similar. Any last questions? So, wow, we are exactly on time, 12 o'clock. Wow. <laughs> How is that even possible? <laughs> and pressure of organizational skill professor. Roger.